My name is Ginger Vieira, you're watching Diabetes Nerd, and I'm about to tell you some really cool science they just discovered about the start of type 2 diabetes. Seriously, scientists may have just uncovered one of the biggest mysteries in type 2 diabetes. Why the pancreas forgets how to make insulin properly. It all comes down to this one sneaky little gene that they've discovered in people with type 2 diabetes. That gene is called SMOC1. Okay, so normally that gene is supposed to be telling the cells in your pancreas to produce insulin. But instead, in people with type 2 diabetes, this gene is switching sides and actually telling your liver to release more sugar. What? That's crazy. Okay, but I'm gonna get into more of this science. Here we go. So this research comes from the City of Hope in Los Angeles, California. The City of Hope is one of the leading research centers for cancer and diabetes. To understand how wild this genetic discovery is, we've gotta rewind for a second. Okay, so inside the pancreas, there are a whole bunch of different types of cells. Your pancreas does more than just produce insulin all day. But the two cells we need to know about for this research are the beta cells and the alpha cells. Beta cells produce insulin, Alpha cells produce a hormone called glucagon. Glucagon tells your liver to release stored sugar. When everything's going well, these two cells communicate with each other flawlessly to maintain nearly perfect blood sugar levels, right? In people without any type of diabetes. In people with type two diabetes, the communication between these cells is not going great. But researchers have spent decades trying to figure out why the beta cells stop producing enough insulin and why the alpha cells are producing more glucagon. Well, the researchers at the City of Hope may have cracked the code. They used advanced RNA sequencing to study the pancreatic cells in people with and without type 2 diabetes. Basically, they looked at thousands of cells in these two different groups of people, and they looked at how the cells are communicating. What they discovered was shocking. Some of the beta cells, the cells that are supposed to produce insulin, were actually transforming into alpha cells, the cells that produce glucagon, which then tells your liver to release more sugar. The beta cells were literally becoming alpha cells. So this means that the beta cells weren't dying off. They were switching sides. The researchers are referring to this as kind of an identity crisis. Like the beta cells forgot who they are and what they're supposed to be doing. Okay, but why? Why are these beta cells becoming alpha cells? This is where we get back to that very specific gene, SMOC1. This is a gene that almost nobody in diabetes research has been paying attention to before this discovery. So normally, apparently this gene is active in alpha cells, not beta cells. And it does play a really important role in helping your body produce insulin. But here's what they discovered. In people with type 2 diabetes, apparently this gene is showing up where it doesn't belong. They're discovering this gene inside the beta cells in people with type 2 diabetes. Meanwhile, the genes inside a beta cell that normally help it do what it's supposed to do apparently start to shut down. And that's why that beta cell starts producing less and less insulin. Okay, but why? To figure out why, the researchers separated thousands of pancreatic cells into five different stages along this process of cellular identity. You know, when the, the cell is taking shape and it's deciding what it's going to become. Is it gonna become an alpha cell, a beta cell, or another type of cell? In people without diabetes, there's generally this flexibility based on what the body needs. So the cell will become a beta cell if the body needs more insulin, or the cell will become an alpha cell or another type of cell, depending on what the body needs. In people with type two diabetes, that flexibility seems to just be gone. Most of the cells decide to become alpha cells. And the gene that's at the center of this transformation process is SMOC1. Okay, so this is a big deal. 
because it helps researchers understand what's happening in the very beginning stages of type 2 diabetes and what is progressively getting worse and worse as a person continues to live with type 2 diabetes. This changes their focus on trying to develop treatments for type 2 diabetes and preventive treatments for type 2 diabetes. So ideally, maybe they're going to try to figure out how to block this gene in the beta cells and protect a person with type 2 diabetes natural insulin production. They also discovered something else a little weird in people with type 2. They discovered these cells that they're referring to as AB cells, meaning they're producing some insulin and some glucagon. That's not right, but that does offer the potential for maybe a treatment that could help these AB cells properly become beta cells so that the body will produce more insulin and stop with all the glucagon. Okay, so now the researchers at the City of Hope are gonna study what causes this SMOC1 gene to turn on in beta cells and, you know, mess up the entire system of regulating blood sugar levels. And then next, can they develop a therapy or maybe there's already a therapy that exists that could actually talk to this gene and say, hey, calm down and please stop messing with our beta cells. Ideally, they could prevent beta cell dysfunction. They could prevent the gradual destruction of beta cells in people with type two diabetes. This research is very exciting because at the moment, the only thing that keeps kind of coming out the door for type two diabetes is more drugs to manage existing type two diabetes. This is looking at like the really root cause of what causes a person's blood sugar to start rising and their insulin production to start declining. So this is a big deal. This is a big deal. So far, most of the research that we have around type two diabetes is always looking at new therapies to treat existing type two diabetes. But this is looking at the root cause and identifying something that's never been identified before. Stay up to date with really cool research. Subscribe to Diabetes Nerd. Thanks for watching. Find my books on Amazon.